Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alec Reed. This is my channel Alec Reads and today we are reading Heart Marriage a Hardstopper Fanfiction by Heartstopper underscore fan22 on Wattpad and today we're reading chapter 103 Imogen. Um, I do want to preface this by there is some mentions of sexual assault in a way. Um, there's just touching that certain people do not want to happen. So if that bothers you in any type of way click off the video now um i just want to keep everyone safe and if that's something that you can't um if that's something that you're not prepared for then um i do have other videos um i will be posting another play plague project today um so make sure you check that out um they're really exciting um but anyway like subscribe and comment down below um whether it's saying hello or whether it's recommendations i'm also going to make an instagram so once i make that i will put that um in a video so that you guys can go check it out um where i'll ask questions and we can do q, q and a's and we can do all types of fun things uh, but anyway let's jump right into the video chapter 103 imogen charlie's perspective my skin crawled as she brushed her hand down Nick's bicep. I understand that he's like the definition of attractive, so I didn't blame her for trying, but the look on Nick's face said it all. He looked so uncomfortable, at, to say the least. He was complete, completely tense. I know I shouldn't be bothered by this because at the end of the day, I'm the one who gets to kiss him goodnight. I'm the one who gets to have random makeout sessions in the middle of a movie. I get his amazing hugs every day, and I get his full attention whenever I need it. But this still bothered me. It was stupid, I know. I guess it's just hard seeing someone flirt with your fiancé. I stood there not moving or doing anything. I just stared at them until I turned around and walked out of the doors. I couldn't take it. I needed to remove myself from the situation before I got upset with Nick, because he didn't deserve that. He didn't do anything wrong. I just didn't like seeing what I was seeing. Nick's perspective. Imogen, the receptionist I met at my lunch break, has already become someone I did not like. She's very touchy, and she's obviously trying to get with me, and does not even try to hide it. I tried telling her I was in a relationship, but she just cuts me off. I was walking out of the back, where all the shots are done, into the main entrance with Ron when Imogen walked up to me. Nick, there you are. How's your first day, darling? You look so good in all those pictures, especially the ones where you had your shirt off, she said as she touched my bicep. I felt so uncomfortable, I inched away from her, causing her to take that hand off of my arm. I looked up from the ground to see Charlie. He was just standing there. He looked so hurt. Fuck, he's gonna get the wrong idea. As I was about to walk over to him, he turned around and left in a hurry. Shit, 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 he probably hates me. He thinks I was flirting back with her, behind his back, like Ben did with Becky. I walked out of the building and looked around the parking lot. I soon spotted our jeep. Thank God he didn't leave and was going to give me a chance to explain. I ran to the car, opened the passenger side door, and hopped in. I was out of breath from the adrenaline. I quickly started to defend myself, praying he would believe me. I would never let her flirt with me. I was just trying to be professional and not cause problems on my first day, but that, that's no excuse. I promise I told her I was in a relationship when I met her at lunch, but she obviously doesn't care. I promise I would never hurt you or flirt back with her. Next time I will, my train of thought completely stopped when Charlie put his hand on my shoulder. I loved the feeling of warmth it gave off. Slow down. Nick, I trust you. I know you wouldn't, do anything to jeopardize what we have. I saw the look on your face when she walked over to you. You were completely tense and you looked so uncomfortable. It made my skin crawl just looking at you like that. It reminded me of how I felt with Ben when he forced himself on me. This isn't your fault, darling. 
I leaned over and hugged Charlie. I love you, was all I could manage to say in response. I didn't know what I was feeling right now, and I felt ashamed and confused, but Charlie always found a way to make me feel better. Just being in his arms made me feel a hundred times better. Charlie's Perspective Nick still looked uncomfortable and on edge, so I thought now was a better time than any to change the subject. Besides the receptionist, how was your day? How'd it go? I saw a smile reappear on his face. It went really well. I got the contract. You got it? I knew you would! I said enthusiastically before pulling him by the cuff of his shirt in for a kiss. I'm so proud of you, I said in between kisses. Third person perspective. The two boys drove down the street towards their apartment as the sun started to set, the sky still painting with flashes of warm tones and pinks and purples filling the sky. Charlie drove as Nick joked about his driving skills when Charlie made a little too harsh of a turn. They laughed as one another shot back insults and comebacks. They're truly adorable, even when they are insulting each other. Charlie thought it would be a good idea to, to celebrate Nick, and what better way to go about that than to go to a proper ice cream shop that has hundreds of wacky flavors to choose from and go for a walk along the beach. Charlie turned down the knob on the stereo and said, I think we need to celebrate. What do you say, me, you, ice cream, and the beach? Nick's eyes lit up at the thought of a romantic night out with his person, his place, his much larger hand over Charlie's knee, sending butterflies Charlie's way. I couldn't think of anything I would rather do, Nick said, as he admired his adorable fiance as he struggled to keep his focus on the road. He so badly wanted to pull over, pull over the car to get on top of Nick. They went into the ice cream shop and looked over the flares, both having a clue what they wanted, until Charlie spotted his favorite, mint chocolate chip. Nick decided on his birthday cake and fudge as Charlie was getting annoyed with how long he was taking to choose. They paid for their ice cream and headed towards the beach. The sun had set more. The colors, although were still present, were fading into the darkness. They walked down to the beach and sat down. Nick took off his jacket and wrapped it around Charlie, who seamlessly was always cold. Nick didn't even need to ask. He knew his fiance was properly cold when, together, looking up at the sky, eating ice cream, both thinking about how could life get any better than this. Chapter 104 There is a trigger warning. Um, this chapter contains... Actions of sexual assault, touching, grabbing inappropriate language. If this triggers anyone, please do not continue. Stay safe and set healthy boundaries with yourself. I'll see you in the next video if you cannot finish. Chapter 104 Charlie's Perspective I got out of the jeep and walked towards the building. It was Nick's first official day. Yesterday was just an interview day, even though he told me they already knew they were going to hire him. It's a good thing Ron told him that before the shoot started. He was a nervous wreck. He could barely tie his shoes. I dropped him off this morning and picking him up again. It's nice. It may not be a lot of time, but I still enjoy it a lot. We listen to Taylor Swift and we sing and dance around the car like lunatics holding our hands and fists like we're grasping onto microphones, singing at the stadium for a crowd. I was so excited to hear about his first proper day. I may or may not have been here for almost an hour because I couldn't wait to see him. Yes, I'm clingy, I know. Hopefully soon I'll get to see some sneak peeks. I want to see some pictures of my sexy fiancé already. It's only been two days, but I'm impatient. 
I walked up to the big, large glass doors. I placed my hand on the handle but stop. I can't move. I feel everything freeze over. My body wouldn't let me stop. I'm helpless. Then a surge of memories flash before my eyes. I see Ben's face push up against mine. I can feel his hot breath on my neck. I can see the pure anger he has towards me in his eyes. I squeeze my eyes closed, blocking out the memories. I was reliving. I opened them again, seeing a worse sight than Ben. Seeing the sight that triggered all this in the first place. That girl, I think Nick said her name was Imogen, had her filthy hands all over him. His face and neck. Nick was pulling away, and she wouldn't stop. He looked so upset. I couldn't just go over there and help him. I tried moving, but it's like I stood in cement. Before I knew it, tears started streaming down my cheeks. I shut my eyes as I saw her slap his ass. I could see his mouth saying the words, please stop, and I couldn't do anything. How pathetic. Nick's Perspective My day was the worst I've ever had. I had to face Imogen again after what she did earlier. I was dreading this. I tried to quickly walk past her, but she was standing at the doorframe waiting for me. Hi, handsome, she said as she ran her nails along my shoulder. I jumped back. I don't really like when you touch me, Imogen. I said, trying to sound confident in my words, but couldn't. Oh, come on, Nick. You had fun at lunch, didn't you? She moved closer to me and started touching my neck and face. I cringed and moved away from her quickly, turning around to leave. When she smacked my ass. I've never wanted to cry more in my entire life than right now. I felt so uncomfortable and I hated the thought of her hands all over my body for the second time today. My whole body was trembling. I felt completely out of control. Please stop. I pleaded. My voice riddled with every emotion possible. I knew there was nothing I could do. I couldn't physically push her away. Charlie's Perspective I used my sleeve and wiped the tears from my face and opened the door. I didn't know what to do. This wasn't a kid from school. This was someone from work that he would have to see every day. I couldn't cause a scene, not at his work. I couldn't do that to him. The last thing I wanted to do was embarrass him. He's probably already embarrassed enough. Nick, we're in a rush. Let's go. I said sweetly before grabbing his hands and interlocking our fingers, gently leading him out of the building. As we walked out, I could see his face soaked with tears. I should have done something before it went too far. Nick would have never let this happen to me right in front of him. I would have done something. I opened the door and he got in. I shut the door behind him and took a deep breath before getting back in the car. I knew this wasn't going to be an easy conversation. I couldn't escape tears as I looked at Nick. He was bawling his eyes out, his head down, practically trembling. I knew the shame he felt. It's like you can't even look anyone in the eyes without feeling dirty or tampered with. It feels like you've done something awful, unthinkable even, but you haven't. You know deep down you did nothing wrong, but that doesn't stop you from feeling the shame. He leaned onto my shoulder and I embraced him. I grabbed his leg and he lifted his body over the armrest and onto my lap. I put my hands on his back and on the back of his head and just held him. His body was trembling. This destroyed me. I felt as if my heart had been ripped out and stomped on. I stroked the back of his head. This isn't your fault. He just cried. No response. I couldn't drive home with us like this. When he was on my lap and I didn't want to let go of him, not until he was calm. After many minutes of stroking his head and giving him gentle kisses, he stopped crying. Then came the words that broke my heart for a second time today. Do you hate me? 
I steadied my breath before answering, but my breath was still hitched, causing my words to come out in a stutter. But my love, I love you with my entire being. I understand you're blaming yourself, but this isn't your fault, not even in the slightest. I kissed the top of his head. He looked up at me, his face puffy and his eyes bloodshot. You didn't deny that you hate me. His voice was quiet, and the sadness was apparent. I held onto both of his hands and held them in front of me. I love you. I don't and I will never, ever hate you. You've done nothing wrong. You believe me, right? A few long seconds went by that were completely silent before he nodded his head. All right, everyone, that is the end of today's episode. Um, but in to, in the next episode, there will still be mentions of sexual assault. So please be careful when watching the next... Oh, there's a hair on my microphone. Give me one second because it keeps touching my face. Anyway, um, be careful when you are watching this because I want you to set healthy boundaries um, with yourself so that you can keep yourself healthy um, because you are important and you are loved and I want you to remember that. Like, subscribe, and comment down below and good morning, good afternoon, or good night and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between. Bye friends.